Hello everyone, welcome back to our travel planning journey. I'm Robin with Consider the Wonders, and we are back to answer another question, which is, when am I going? So whenever our family is planning to go to one of the national parks, there are six things that I tend to look at in order to help me figure out when is the best time for us to go. So the first one is remembering where you're going. The location is often going to dictate the best time for you to go to the park. Let's take, for example, Glacier National Park. So that's going to be up in the north. Where is Glacier? What state is it in? That is up in Montana, almost to the Canadian border. And any parks that are in the north are going to be challenging to do during the winter. Not impossible, but more challenging, especially if you're looking to do specific things. Oftentimes roads are closed because they have so much snow. You just can't get to some of the things. The park, some of the parks could be closed, or not parks, some of the parts, some of the parts, no, some of the areas of the park could be closed that you wanted to go to. And so it's a really important for you to know where you're going and what's available to you while you're there. So that way you can choose the best dates to be there because you don't want to get there and want to do this specific thing and realize, oh, I can't do that because I can't get there because there's snow on the ground, or it's not open because it's just the not, not the right season for it. Another thing that I really like to do whenever we are getting ready to plan for a national park is to gather everybody together and look at our calendars. I know that that seems really simple, but if you're anything like our family, we're extremely busy. And so we have to take a look at our calendars and figure out when is the best time that everyone is available to be able to go. If you're planning on going with a larger group of people, maybe several family members, maybe a couple of families together, this is especially important so that you can choose the best time for everyone. Another great option while you're checking out your calendar is to take into consideration holidays. Holidays can be some of the best times to go to the park, but they also can be some of the busiest times to go to the park. So definitely keep that in mind if you're not like a huge friend of crowds, friend of crowds, fan of crowds, that's it. I know our family definitely looks at the holidays because my husband works a full-time job. And so there are some holidays that he gets time off for, and those definitely help in terms of us being able to add maybe an extra day, or it's just a good week for him to be away from his job. Sometimes the national parks have special events going on during the holidays. So for like the 4th of July or maybe the Christmas season, they will sometimes have uh, special things going on and you may want to go to those things. That may be why you specifically chose this park. Um, you may be going to Sequoia National Park to see the tree lighting uh, for Christmas, which is like a really exciting event. So obviously you're going to want to go around the holiday season and that could help you as you're planning. Since my husband works a full-time job, we also look at built-in vacation days or just the best days to have vacation as we're continuing to look at our calendar. And just like my husband is working a full-time job, my daughter is in school full-time. And so we have to take into consideration school holidays, when she needs to be at school, uh, and like when does school start? When does school end? You know, she's got summers off and then there's like spring break, fall break, holiday break. We try our best to take those times and utilize them because they are opportunities for us to be able to get away together as a family. Now that's 
oftentimes when other families go to the parks as well. So there's a good chance that there's gonna be more people there, but that's okay. Like we are trying to utilize the time that is best for us. Okay, so you're remembering your where, you're looking at your calendar, you're considering holidays, vacation days, the school calendar. Now, the last thing that you wanna do is you wanna look at how long you can actually be gone. How long you can be at the park is obviously gonna dictate the amount of things that you can do while you're there. So if you're looking to go to like, say Yellowstone National Park, well, that is a massive, huge park. And there is no way that you can do that park in a week. I mean, and just see like every single thing that you wanna do. Now you can go there and you can do some things. That's what we've done. We have been to Yellowstone Park three times and we still haven't seen everything that's there. But if you wanna go there, if you have more than a week, maybe you have two, maybe three weeks, that would be an amazing spot to go to. But regardless, Look at how much time you can actually devote to uh, the place that you're gonna go. Look, it really doesn't matter how much time you have to go as long as you have some time to go. So just check out those calendars, figure out those dates, and then set them. And then get ready to make reservations. We're gonna be talking about that in a future video but I want you to get your dates set. So that way you can start preparing even further and planning even more with those dates in mind. And with that, that's all I've got to chat about for the when you are going on your national park planning journey. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure to grab our guide off of our website. There's a link down in the description. That's again, just gonna help you keep everything together, a little bit more organized. I'm big you know, on those things. So if it's a helpful guide for you, then make sure to grab that on our website. And I will see you in the next section.